Silas, automotive is really becoming a key piece of Qualcomm's diversification strategy. So I was hoping you could tell us at a high level what cellular connectivity is bringing into the automotive space today. Yeah, thanks for the question. I think it's a very good question. So as you can see that, you know, the autonomous uh, automotive industry is sort of going through a transition, both in electrification and becoming in more and more autonomous, basically. And with the more sensors for autonomous driving especially, and also for electrification, there's more sensors that get added to the system, understanding how the vehicle is behaving and what it's doing and collecting that sensing data. The connectivity can help a lot there, basically, for OEMs to understand what's going on, and that can help a lot, basically. So I think that is a key useful thing which is there, that connectivity and 5G offers, basically. And so in this push towards increasingly performant autonomous driving systems, you know, there's an obvious convenience factor there, but how are you keeping this concept of life safety at the center of the research that you're doing? Yeah, so if you look at our demo this year, we are looking at pedestrian safety, uh, or what they call as vulnerable road users. So that includes cyclists also. So I think the key thing that was sort of an eye-opener was for us was that if you look at the pedestrian fatalities in US, they are at an, almost at an all-time high. So you know they are increasing over the last few years, and that is a cause for concern for us. And we are trying to see how can, how can connectivity help there. So the demo that we have is which shows with a pedestrian and a bicyclist, if they are connected and they are reporting in an anonymous manner their location information to the cloud, then the cloud can tell you know okay uh, whether a pedestrian or a bicyclist and a vehicle are in a collision course or not and it can inform the vehicle about it, and the vehicle driver can sort of you know, take uh, uh, actions to prevent a collision, basically. So just knowing that behind a building that there's a pedestrian makes you a little bit more aware. So it's, it's what we call as informational safety, basically. So it's not functional safety, but it's very important in just safer driving, basically. And talk to us a little bit about car to cloud connectivity. I just want to understand a little bit better why augmenting the intelligence and the compute that's in the vehicle with an always-on link to a cloud platform or service is important? Yeah, so that's a very good question. So, uh, you know, as you can see, like, you know, um, cars, when we used to buy cars earlier, we used to buy a piece of hardware and very little software. But now you see that uh, one of the big things which has happened is over there updates. So you buy a car and it constantly keeps on updating itself based on the new features that get added, basically. Um, that's a very common feature, so the cloud services helps there. You can unlock new functionality in the car based on a cloud service. So, you know, I buy a car, I don't want a functionality for some time, the hardware is ready for it, but the cloud can enable that functionality later, basically. Um, uh, it can also tell, the cloud can also keep track of the health of my car and let me know if something's going to go wrong and so on. So there are various examples and use cases that have been created by you know this cloud connectivity which was not there earlier basically. So if you look out on maybe a three to five year time horizon, what are some of your major R and D priorities for automotive? Yeah, um, so we think that you know of course this cloud connectivity and you know how we can help with the safety there is a number of our priority because of you know we already see the fatalities going up, so that's a concern for us. Um, and then beyond that, you know, enabling um, I think modem deployment in vehicles, basically, right? So that's also a key area of research for us in the sense that, um, you know, cars have a very different form factor than phones. And sort of how do you sort of uh, deploy modem in vehicles or connectivity in vehicles very different from what you do for phones. So understanding that and enabling that in an easy way for auto EMs, I think is a very important thing which will enable more connectivity and therefore more services, basically. Well, it's been really exciting to see this rapid growth in Qualcomm's automotive business, and I yeah. appreciate you taking the time to share uh, the future outlook with us. Thank you. Thanks for the questions.